What is up, everyone? It is go time. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I, I, I am your, uh, I am one of your hosts tonight, Clutz Leo, aka Jason Gerino, and the ever beautiful Matt is my other co-host. Say hi, Matt. What's up? Yeah. What's up, guys? How are you doing tonight? I'm uh, uh not doing too great. Oh. I have a lot of stuff going on, but I'm here. So that's. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for yeah. uh, showing up. That's good. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it's not good that your shit's going on, but no, it's cool. We'll figure it out. That's all I ask. Cool. So uh, today uh, we're gonna dive into some news, of course, new releases. So we're gonna touch on. We're gonna uh, actually we're not gonna touch on. We're gonna go elbow deep in midnight releases. We're gonna discuss that a little bit, and you'll you'll see what's going on further when we get into it. Um, and after the stream, I'm gonna try to hop on uh, Fortnite Battle Royale. Uh, the test server should be up and live, and it goes live free to everyone. We'll dive in that also later uh, in five days. So I'm gonna try to play it out. So if people want to stick around the stream. I'm trying to hop into it, and we're gonna see how that goes. Um, but let's uh, let's jump into it. what new releases do we have this week? Let's yeah. See. So okay, no problem. You want you want to take this? That's not, I'll start it. So a uh, couple things this week. We have Project Cars 2 that came out. That's coming out tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be on the PS4, Xbox, and PC. Um, Dragon Ball, is it Xenoverse? I think it's Xenoverse 2. Is that out? Oh, Xenoverse 2, that's the old one. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Xenoverse 2, it's not, 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 that's not the fancy one on E3 that everyone loved. Uh, that comes out tomorrow also on just the Switch. Uh, Pokémon Tournament DX, which is just a deluxe edition uh, of the Pokémon Tournament that was already out on the Wii U. Uh, that comes out on the Switch tomorrow. Um, 926, what is that, Saturday? No, that's next Tuesday. Yes, next Tuesday. Uh, the Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition comes out 926. That's PS4, Xbox, and PC. Uh, this includes all DLC. Um, and I think that's it. But you can also purchase, uh, the Collector's Editions again. So if you missed out on the Pit-Boy and you want it again, uh, they're doing the Game of the Year Pit-Boy Editions again. So it looks pretty sick. Uh, this one, I know I'm going to kill this name, Matt. I don't know if I can do this. It's, yeah, no, I mean, this is, yeah, this is, it's, it's Danganronpa. Danganronpa. Yeah. Okay. I'm pumped for this one. This is a good game. Version 3. Uh, Killing Harmony 926 also comes out Tuesday. Uh, so this came out a couple days ago, and this was a surprise. This was announced at the Tokyo Game Show. Um, Final Fantasy IX. Uh, that came out on the 18th and on the PS4. Um, it includes uh, like uh, remastered graphics, remastered um, uh, cutscenes, and it also has... Yeah, HD cutscenes. Um, it... Boosts? Yeah. They call them boosts. So basically you can... I, I think you have to pay real money. I'm not 100% sure, but basically you can make... Your characters level faster. Um, I think there's even a random encounter, uh, like you can turn them off, like if you just want yeah, to play I mean, the I'm game. I'm not sure if it's. I, I didn't hear anything about it being like in-app purchases or anything, but uh, you could be right. I don't know. I don't know too much about it. Let I me, bought the I'm game. I'm gonna look it up. Go go to, go and talk about the next one because I know you're hyped on. Yeah, this no, one. the I'm next one. Yeah, up. Guild Wars Two, uh, Path of Fire. That's Guild Wars Second Expansion Pack is coming out uh, tomorrow. I think tonight it goes live. I think it goes a little early tonight. Um, but that is looking awesome. It adds a bunch of new classes to the game. Uh, not classes, but like mastery classes. So like uh, your thief can now be like a sniper and like stuff like that. It's really cool looking. But uh, yeah, I mean, and kind of just segueing from that, from the new releases um, to what we've been playing this week. Um, I obviously have been playing a lot of Guild Wars 2 lately. <laughs> Me and my wife jump back into that just because uh, with the new expansion pack coming out, I that's what I nice. do with MMOs. I kind of cycle through them. And Guild Wars 2 is a great... Um, free to play, so I mean, you just you buy it, buy the game, and you're in, and it has tons of content. It's extremely casual friendly in my case for mm -hmm. the way I play MMOs. You know, you just jump in, you do a few things, you get a few levels, and uh, it's it's a great game. I highly recommend it to people who like MMOs. It's like thirty bucks for the base game. I actually think the base game is free to play right now, um, or not right now. I think they transferred. Like you can get like just Guild Wars two, okay. and you can play up to, like level twenty or something. I, I don't know how it is, but uh. Definitely go check it out. I, I'd recommend anybody. And if you do check it out, hit me up on Twitter. Um, we're on the Tarnished Coast server, and we can like you can join our Game Octane Guild and mess around. So yeah, yeah join us up on the uh, Discord too. You can you can do the chat through the Discord. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I always I always forget our Discord, especially in talking about our Discord. We do have a Destiny Two channel in our Discord for all the 
the guys who are playing Destiny 2 with me. I know I'm trying to get them to join the Discord, but I've been playing that a lot too. I've been doing the trying to do the raid, and it's just been kicking my ass. I yeah, between you and Myth, I think uh, oh Myth's God. one of our homies. Uh, Game like he's been doing a lot. Doing rough. And, and Fersion just linked it in the chat, so if you guys are in the chat, make sure you grab that. Uh, another game we've been playing was Citadel Forged with Fire. Now, I just want to go over it real quick. This is uh, a game we got to uh, Early Access Review. So you can check that on their website, like my thoughts on the game. Basically, it's a sandbox MMO where it's really broad. It doesn't really tell you what to do. It's like, think of it as Minecraft. Like, you get there, you don't know what the hell to do. So you just start gathering shit until you get enough level to actually do something. Um, I played it for a couple hours. Matt joined me, I think, for an hour or two. Was it this Monday? Was it this Monday we did this? I think it was. Monday or Sunday? No, Sunday. I wrote, the, I wrote it up on Monday. We did it Sunday. Um... So, basically, uh, I became, I guess, like a melee puncher. Matt had a wand like Harry Potter, and he was running around and blasting yeah. things. And then we decided, Matt's like, hey, I'm going to start making armor and stuff and, and clothes. I'm like, cool, well, I'm going to build a fucking house. So, we built. I built a house. Uh, I put uh, a healing spot in there, and we we're. it was pretty fun. Like, we had a, we had a pretty pretty good dag on it. And considering it yeah, was, no. there was a lot of bugs, there were bugs, um... We had a bunch of people come in the stream and like give me tips and stuff after you left, which was really awesome. Uh, but definitely a game to look at. Uh, I think it was like only a couple, it was like 20 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. It's not a full price game, but it's a full fledged MMO. Um, you can have raids, you can have uh, your house built, you can build it any way you want. Uh, I've, I had this brainstorm the other day, Matt, where we built like a two story internal house and maybe have multiple okay. levels on it. And I had to move the door because, you know, we had to jump to get in the door. I moved it, oh, so yeah, it was, it was much better. So. We'll have to I jump do want to jump in. It. It's it's yeah. It's not. They call it an MMO. Uh, it's a massive sandbox on uh, online game. It's very much like uh, if you would say Ark or Minecraft. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call it. Just be careful with the MMO term. Um, but yeah, it's twenty five bucks. And mm -hmm. another good cool thing. It's it's a it's not like Ark where it's you know this big, crazy. I like how it's like focused on magic. Like you're yeah. you're a wizard, so and you're not you going to be ride like brooms. guns or. Yeah, you you can unlock brooms. You can tame beasts. Yeah, you can I ride dragons and shit too. So like, yeah, it's it pretty looks sick. so good. Yeah, so there's, um, a, there's a lot of potential in that game. I would definitely put on your wish list. Definitely put. On yeah, your definitely. Wish list. And I would just just the, the reviews on Steam are mixed. I would just you gotta understand people are stupid. User reviews are one of the worst things I've seen. Um, on come to Steam, but so don't don't let that deter you from. Yeah, getting I, it. I know a lot it's of there are there are some problems with the game. There are some bugs. But I don't think it's enough to warrant a negative review. Like I, I am, I'm pretty excited to see where this game goes because I can really see it taking off, and just being a blast to hop in with a couple friends. Uh, hey, you know, what? let's 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 build a three story house today. You know what? Let's go raid someone else's place. It's like like there's so many things that the world can open up, and I think it's just gonna get better. Hopefully, it gets better. Yeah. Uh, hype. What are you hyped for? Hype train. This is hard. Yeah. Um. Man, so Pokemon. Oh, another new release. Let's jump back for a second. Um, Pokemon Gold and Silver come out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot right. about that one. My apologies. Yeah, no, I totally forgot. No, it's cool. I'm, I'm super hyped to play that. Jump through that again. Um, super hyped just to try out Guild Wars, play Destiny. Um, there's not too many things I'm looking forward to, to be honest. Um, man, let me think about it. I, I've been playing. I just played before this. I played to the uh, Evolution mm -hmm. video game. Uh, it's the card game, you know, that they're it's a board game, they're transitioning to the digital realm, and it's it's really fun. Um, I just played it before and like I got my ass kicked, but <laughs> it's super awesome. So I'm I'm hyped to jump back into that. Yeah, I, I was watching a little bit of it. It looks pretty slim. Yeah, there's there's not too much I'm like super excited for, but what, what are you looking for? Uh I have to say Cuphead. That comes out next week. Uh this game has been around for ages. Ever. And it got a lot of funny publicity when they showed one of the uh, game journalists not understanding directions and instructions and try to jump jump over like the tutorial yeah like, it, it everyone's probably seen it um, they got a lot of funny hype behind that and it's finally coming out it looks amazing it's all hand drawn like steamboat Willie like style and uh, yeah I'm I'm pretty excited for that uh, I'm also excited to try Fortnite Battle Royale. Like the the whole um, battle arena that we had a podcast on a couple times ago or a couple couple weeks ago. 
Uh, we talked a lot between uh, PUBG and we talked between H1Z1 differences and stuff like that. So with with Fortnite coming out, it's the first one that's actually going to be free. And that is coming out the 26th. I believe I already said that and I believe we're going to get into that a little further as well. Um, so this is the first Battle Royale game that's actually going to be free. And this is purely based on crafting. It doesn't matter what your skill is in the base game. Or if you have any, or purchase any weapons, everyone starts with a pickaxe, and you basically need to go through and wreck. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I kind of want to see, like I said, after, yeah. the, after the stream, or after this podcast, I'm probably going to jump on. We're going to see if we can not suck. So that's next. Yeah, thing do. definitely. But you know me, it's probably going to suck. Let's just move. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. Uh, you want to go with the news? You ready to jump into that? Yeah, let's what do this. Got let's jump into this. These are some big stories that came out this week. There's there's quite a bit that came out of uh, Tokyo Game Show, but there wasn't a lot of like super crazy news. There was more just like little announcements and stuff. So yeah, like I mean, if I mean I don't know if you have that pulled up, but I can pull up. Uh, I mean, I have it's the big announcements from the Sony press conference. Yeah, um, if you, if you, you go, go I can that. go yeah, through so it. Like, if it's gonna take you a bit to go, bro. Oh, if you, you already have. Had it. No, yeah, I got it up. Um, oh, yeah, go for it then. Let's do it. Yeah, so uh, the one big thing I think that kind of stole the show for a lot of people is uh, Left Alive. It's announced. Um, it's a Square Enix game. Yeah, okay. Um, I did, yeah, I did see that one. I yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the way they describe it as a brand new action, survival action shooter set in a dark, gritty world. And it's directed by the Armored Core guy. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce the name. Tashifumi Nabe Shima. And it, well, the big thing that drew me was it features the character designs from uh, God, Yoji Shinkawa, that guy. You were probably from Metal destroying Gear. those. Yeah, fucking no, names. it's the dude from Metal Gear, like the dude who makes the cool Metal Gear black and whites and shit. Like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that dude with character designs, um, and then some other guys, uh, <laughs> Takiyuki Yanase, he worked on Metal Gear and Xenoblade you know, Blade X as well. You were fucking this up so bad. Yeah, but <laughs> there's a there's a trailer online. It looks really sick. Uh, um, but that was that was one of that was the big thing that came out. Then, I think it was uh, the biggest kinda, thing, yeah. Yeah, I know the internet blew up about it. And then I'm kind of going to steal this new story that you had up there, but uh, definitely Monster Hunter World got a release date. It's coming out uh, January 26, 2018. Yup. Um, they also showed the special edition console that they have, which right now is only available in Japan, which pisses me off. Uh, it's a PS4 Pro too, and it looks so pretty. Um, and then there's going to be wow. a deluxe, a digital deluxe edition and a collector's edition that comes with the statue and stuff. Looks pretty great. Um, again, I believe from what I saw, the collector's edition is only available in Japan. But uh, you can probably Ugh. import it, to be honest. You can probably import the PS4. It just costs a lot more. Um, I would love to do that. But yeah. And then uh, Shadow Classes, they dropped a new trailer. Not too much information on that. There was no uh, release date or whatever. It looked pretty, though. Um, it did look pretty. Yeah, it looked pretty. I mean, it looked like Shadow Classes, which is fine. Then, like you said, they uh, popped out of that Final Fantasy, and they were like, "It's available now," and like that's that's really cool. Um, yeah. And then Zone of Enders is going to get a second. Well, yeah, wait, Zone of Enders, the second runner remastered with VR support. Mm-hmm. If you're into Zone of Enders, that's cool, I guess. With I, VR I support, it. that's sick because you can do the match. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I never liked the first one, but whatever. And then uh, Noctis is coming to uh, Dissidia, that new Dissidia game that's coming out. Um, Noctis is obviously the guy from the protagonist from Final Fantasy 15. Yep. Um, and then Noctis. Dragon's Crown, which is we talked about, uh, and, and it looks like it's going to be released in Japan um, on Only? January 25th. Oh. Let's see here. After it was Legion, you know, Dragon Crown is a enhanced version of the National Future Four K Squad will be released in Japan on January 25th. That is definitely a game I'm going to import because that game is amazing. If they don't want to release it in America, go fuck yourself. Um, Damn. Yeah. It's like so that. good. It's so good. One of my favorite games of all time. I have this great screenshot um, from when I played the game. And uh, when you, when people, like the, the enemy, the, the teammates you can recruit are like random, randomized. And it was a dwarf. And his name was Jesus. And like, I, I went to his crystal? like at the altar and he, he was dead. And his, his like tagline was like, I will be avenged. And I was like, it, it's just funny because it's like, Jesus said, I will be avenged. And I was like, what the fuck? This is crazy. Like, I don't know. I thought it was hilarious. It probably wasn't that funny. I thought it was great. Um, but then they're going to have a Japanese, <laughs> let's go back to this, Japanese Studio VR Music Festival. Um, not too much information about that. It's going to be a VR Japanese thing. I don't know. Music. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, then a big one I was excited about was the 
Nico Asume cat collecting sim. It's a mobile game. I don't know if you played it. You can collect cats. It's yeah, it's awesome. a, yeah. I haven't played it, but it's been insanely popular. And I think that's how funny that's coming to VR. I think it's gonna be so great. But yeah, that's and those were like the big ones. I, I'm super pumped for that. Um, yeah, Myth just popped in here. Multiplayer co-op Final Fantasy 15 is going live on October 21st for premium season pass owners. That's pretty cool. That if pretty you're still cool. into that game, I heard the multiplayer was great. I want to play it, but I'm not gonna buy the damn season pass for it. So yeah, I haven't played it yet, so I'll be good. Okay, but yeah, that, that was all the Tokyo game show. That was the big stuff from that. Um, yes, Sony Sony dropped some good stuff. I think uh, Square is on the right path finally again with getting some new games, and especially being more broad. They're not just RPGs, so that's going to be sick. That's pretty. Yeah, and there were some other announcements there that were, uh, you know, not from you know just Sony, but there was other stuff. But a lot of it was just Japan focused. I mean, with Tokyo Game Show, that happens a lot, mm-hmm. where it's either you know just extremely Japan focused because I mean it's it's their game show. Um, so not a lot of that stuff is always for the Western audience, so it doesn't get a lot of coverage. But it's definitely a cool show. Yeah, I would love to go there one year. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything that's going on, but I would love to go and just check everything we gotta, out. Yeah, yeah, we'll go next year, right? Yeah, definitely next year. Yeah. So uh, jumping into other news, this 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 whole episode is basically getting broadsided by battle royale arena. Which is like the new thing right now. It, it's it's the hottest thing Play out really there right well. now. So jumping into it, battlegrounds has set another record. It has become the most concurrent users than any other game in Steam history. It reached 1.3 million users on September 16th. So this was just recently. The record was currently held by Dota 2 back in March 2016 at 1.2 million. So if you do the actual math, it's like 50,000 users more difference. Even though I said 1.3, 1.2, that's a little bit more, but that's that's a huge, huge numbers, it's yeah. a huge yeah it's a huge huge number considering it's still early access it's thirty dollars a game dota 2 is free to play so it's kind of a huge uh, a, a huge difference and i think the actual number is they sold uh over 10 million copies of PUBG. Jeez. and my, my question with that is that blows my mind so is it are these people playing the game or are they opening the game and sitting in the main menu while they it, do other it, stuff? As long as the game you is open I mean? and like, Steam. So that's not necessarily that they're actually playing, but that's how many users are in the game according to Steam. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, is is this like an internet thing where everybody's like, man, let's just open PUBG and leave it open on my computer and let's see I mean, it could what be. the concurrence is. There could be some Reddit somewhere that's, that's, you know I mean? that's doing you know it. I mean, I mean there's like not that... without getting it from the actual developers on what their server numbers are but i think their server numbers as soon as they're logged as soon as they connect to it on steam i'm sure they're on the internet i'm sure they're getting pings yeah. to their server so it's hard it's going to be hard to rate but i guess if you count Maybe. how many people are in a lobby or in the actual game it'd be a closer close but it's also the same thing with dota 2 like how many when yeah, actually yeah, 1.2 million people play playing or what? Yeah. yeah i was gonna say play devil's advocate you could do the same thing with dota now that i think about it so yeah maybe you're but, right but either way it's maybe. there's there's no denying that this game is blown up and it's coming to xbox one i think in just a few months they don't have an exact date yet but it's coming this year uh yeah. and despite microsoft you know kind of publishing it they also said it can come to other consoles too uh, I think H1Z1, um, King of the Kill, is already being pushed over to PS4 soon. It was supposed to be like two years ago. I don't know what's going on that anymore. Yeah, those guys. That need... game just needs the fold, I mean, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah, why. Uh, according to, to, be like... according to yeah, Twitch, sorry, wait, wait. I believe, um, I looked the other day. Uh, let me Actually, I'll look right now. Um, and see what I was going to say is, yeah, why you pull that up is just like, I don't get why if I had 20 bucks to spend, 30 bucks to spend, why would I buy H1Z1? Uh, King of the Kill, mm-hmm. as opposed to Battlegrounds. That blows me away. I, to see I, people still streaming that game and playing that game, it, I do not understand. I like, think it's just the people that started with it, and they're used to it, and they're good at it now. Like, they don't want to start another game and be at the bottom. I think that's where we're looking at. Because right now, PUBG has 62,000 viewers. This is just an estimate. This is just on Twitch as of right now. Uh, you have to scroll down, like, four rows until you get to King of the Kill, and they only have 3,200 viewers. So you're looking at almost 60,000 viewer difference. I mean, rounding up and, and 
probably padding it a little bit without doing yeah. the exact math. Um, yeah, PUBG is the number one game streamed on Twitch. Was you, sorry, number one viewed game on Twitch. It beats League of Legends, beats Hearthstone. Uh, I mean, it beats Dota 2 and Call of Duty combined. Like, it's it's a pretty elaborate number. Like, let's, it's no way to pad that at all. That's impressive. It, this might be running back on old stuff um, that you talked about with Kurt and that one guy, but why do you think that is? Why do you think PUBG is so... Um, I like I said, we did we did kind of mention it in the, the other podcast, but I believe it's it's the 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 suspense because everyone starts on the level playing field. Like there's no ranking, there's no leveling up. It's not like MMO where you could be level one, and you're gonna get wrecked by like a level fifty. I mean, it's it's. So you think it's that level playing field? Do you think it's the uh, accessibility? I, maybe I think like even the shittiest person in the world has a possibility of getting you know first place. As long as they, as long as they play well, or they get lucky, like you land in a spot, there's no one there, but there's a ton of, there's a ton of weapons. I mean, you're you're, you're you may come out on top. And I think it's the competitiveness, because when you're playing that game, like I played H1Z when I didn't, never haven't bought in battle guns yet, but I'm probably gonna get it soon. I was hoping, I was really hoping it was gonna go on sale, but there's no reason to go on sale when you've already sold over 10 million copies. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but I feel like it's it's intense. Like you're into it. You're you're really in the game. You get psyched up. You get a kill. You're like fuck yeah. I'm gonna, you know I'm I'm the fucking I'm the I'm the king. I'm the king of the fucking world. Like I, nothing can stop me. But but like it, it's it's really based on how you want to play. If you want to be crazy and kamikaze and run through and just kill people, well, that a lot of times that works. Like you can get ten kills a match. If you just want to hide and sneak and try to sneak your way to the end, you can also. You can also win that way too. So there's there's more than just one way to win. Yeah. It's not it's not like I have to have this loadout and I have to have this to win the game. Like you can go out there with a fucking frying pan in PUBG and beat the game. And you can just like mm-hmm. bash people around. But I think it's the competitiveness and it's it's it hits that that unknown competitiveness and I, I'm trying to think of it. It's it's like a it's like a raw um a raw emotion when you're playing like your life depends on it because otherwise you're gonna have to go all the way back out there's no respawn like you're dead you're dead so it's a, it's a different type of feel when you're playing it and it makes it more extreme i guess you can call it um and battlegrounds is just doing it right i mean i know h1c1 did it first and they've been doing it they did it well for, i mean mediocre for a while but when battlegrounds comes out and drops 10 million copies and it's still growing and like i'm still ready to buy it Version on the yeah. chat says he'll, if I buy it, he'll buy it. So it's it's you got to do it now. So it's it's at a point where the game is just going to get bigger. Is it going to hit a plateau? Yeah, it's going to hit a plateau pretty quick. I don't think there's going to be much more than ten million copies. I know when X when it comes out on Xbox, they'll probably get another spike. Um, and that's the thing with it coming out on Xbox. I mean, I'm going to buy it again on Xbox. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I would rather play that type of game on my PC. But I know I have friends who only play on like you know who play console games. I don't have mm-hmm. a PC, and they like. I don't. I want to be able to play with them, so I, I'll buy it again. And I think that's where PUBG is kind of like the magic of it. Is like we, you know, you're talking about all the others, but I think the real big thing for me, at least, is playing with people and the funny stories we have with people. You know, screaming at each other like, "Oh, get over this house, get yeah, over yeah. this house," like all that stuff. And that's why I think. I mean, I, I think it's going to sell fucking gangbusters on on a council because I think more people are going to jump into it because like they're going to hear about how great it is. And they're going to hear all this stuff. And the people who buys, you know, who has his Xbox just for Madden every year and Call of Duty is going to try it out. And he's going to freaking fall in love with it because I think it's a great game. Yeah. Which is crazy to me because I never thought I'd like an, uh, a Battle Royale game like that. I did I did the Arma 2 thing. I did the Arma, like, mm-hmm. 3. I did the the, uh, the H1Z one. I thought they were all stupid. And for some reason, yeah, this game is just, it's a lot of fun. But, I, think, I think it's a depth. I think it's the, uh, the whole... It's not just find a weapon and go. Like you can, you can scrap weapons together. You can add parts. I mean, it's 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 really deep. You, yeah. you have to, you have to put time into it to, to really get something out of it to really get good. It's not like hey, I, I'm used to first person shooters. You can have the number one first person shooter in the world and throw it in this game and get their ass kicked and, and be booted out in 30 seconds. I mean, it's yeah. it's such a, it's such an interesting, amazing concept, and it's only going to get bigger. Um, Definitely. You already touched on Monster Hunter World, so we'll kind of we'll kind of jump on that. Unless you want to say anything else on it, I think we kind of covered. No, it. I mean uh, I'm definitely excited for that game. Definitely uh, 
June 26, 2018. Uh, I should be still in recovery from my surgery, but I should be doing pretty good. So hopefully maybe uh, we can do like an all day stream on the channel and I'll just play the shit out of that. And maybe I can talk to my buddy and see if he wants to come up and bring his PS4 and we can just do like a, you know, thing and maybe we can play with viewers and stuff if you guys want to get the game too. But That'd be sick. yeah, definitely, definitely watch out for that. I so. ever, I haven't played, played Monster Hunter demo. I think when I was at Comic-Con or one of them, like Cap, it was a Capcom, I think has it. They, uh, yeah. they had a booth and you can sit down and play the, I was like, uh, it was cool, but like, I gotta go. I was like, I had, a million, I, had a, I had a million things to do. So I wasn't able to get yeah. comfortable in the game. Like I got, I gotta go talk to someone. I got to interview. I can't just sit here and play this like three year old. I do want to, yeah, let me jump in real fast. Uh, just yeah. before we go to the next topic, myth wants to bring up monster Hunter stories is out. Um, Monster Hunter Stories, I wrote off hardcore. I bought it, but I wrote off because I'll buy anything that says Monster Hunter on it. <laughs> and uh, I played it the other day. It is phenomenal. Is it? Like, it is, it's great because it's, I, I thought it was going to try to be like Monster Hunter, and it's not. It's trying to be nothing like Monster Hunter. The gameplay is this rock, paper, scissors type of battle system where, like, if you choose power attack and they choose fast attack, mm-hmm. the power attack's better. It's, it's great. It's got the goofy Monster Hunter, like, kind of lore and story, but, uh, Art style is amazing. It has like monster collecting, like Pokemon. Cool. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend that game. But yeah, let's continue. I haven't, I haven't turned on my 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 fucking 3ds in ages. Oh, I, I didn't want to buy it. I didn't want to buy it. Of course, you I do. want fucking on the Switch because I don't understand why they put this shit on a dead console. We're not going to talk about that today. Though. No, so we're, we're not going to bring that up. We'll, we'll bring it up probably another time. <laughs> God damn it. Basically. Uh, so <laughs> moving on. Uh, so Fortnite was found. It was they found a feature of Fortnite that PS4 and Xbox One was crossplay. You actually could play across the consoles. This has since been corrected. corrected. Um, so while playing on the PS4, they're running against someone uh, using a space, and their username spaces are disallowed on PSN usernames. So that they, he assumed that it was on Xbox One. Uh, they speculate as a PC player, but they come to find out that it did not exist on PC. It was only an Xbox Live user. Da 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 da. They found out that they're actually able to play console to console. Um, Sony kind of got upset and it, it, they turned it off. And it's kind of hard to go off on it, but um, it, it was. It, people are kind of upset, like they didn't know it was happening because I think more people probably would have bought it. Like an instant buy because people are on the fence of this because it's going to be free to play. But if you buy it now, you can kind of jump in and level up and you know basically test the game for them. So if, if this would have if this announcement would have been if this functionality had been announced and people would have known about it, I think it would have sold some more copies. Well, the problem is I don't know. I think this is goes towards back to back to the PS4 not wanting crossplay. Yeah. Um, I think this goes to show you how easy it is. I mean, Rocket League. Uh, Jeremy mm-hmm. Dunham has said multiple times that he could literally go into the office and flip a switch and you could you could play crossplay. Mm-hmm. That's how easy it is. Like the infrastructure is there, it's set up. It's literally Sony just holding it up. I think there's somebody at Epic Games that was like, let's just fucking do it and let's hopefully get the internet on our side. Yeah. And we can push Sony to do it. Um I think the more people bitch and moan about wanting Sony to do it, I think they're not gonna do it because they're they just wanna they want to be that stick in the mud. And honestly I totally understand from a business decision mm-hmm. decision why you wouldn't you have quadruple the amount of councils as the competitor why do you want to help them out and let you know if, if they did this for me that'd be amazing i could play because i want to play destiny on my ps4 but my friends play it on xbox so i have to play it on my xbox one yep and like i would rather play it on my ps4 and if sony did that like they see that's the that's the benefit but see what sony wants me to do is talk to my you know fucking cousin and try to get him to buy a ps4 and shit like that's not gonna happen you know what i mean like mm-hmm. Not but good. but it comes down to it like you know, that's what they want. They want people to you know buy it on PS4 and all that shit. I get it. I get it's a business decision. I think it's fucking stupid. I think they just need to bow out and just be like, we're, we're going to concede on this point, because at the end of the day, we're all playing the same game. Just and if if, if it was that easy, if Call of Duty could be played on PS4 and Xbox, and it, it it would just blow my mind. Like just fucking do it, Sony. But they're not going to. I, I think I think Sony is really starting to change their mind, especially the last couple of like conversations with them where like they're they're in talks they're thinking about it i i think sony is still a little shaky over the the huge hack they had and i think they're trying to use it as a if i if we open this up like how much more insecure our systems are going to be type of thing like i i i feel like that's still in the back of their mind um 
But who knows? But supposedly yeah. Rocket League is set to go across the Switch, Xbox One, and PC. So yeah. there's there's crossplay right there. So it's up to Sony. It is up to Sony to pick their shit up if they want to. Um, uh, moving on to more, uh, God, more battleground style H one Z one style game. Uh, a new game was just announced two days ago called Project X. Uh, this is from UK developer Autom Automaton. I'm going to call it Automaton. I don't know if that's true or not. They have stepped the game up and are expanding the game to 400 players. And they are going to have a 12 kilometer by 12 kilometer map. So just to put it in perspective, PUBG has 200 player maximum. And they have an 8 kilometer by 8 kilometer arena. So not only they're making the map bigger. But they're going to double the amount of players that are going to be in this map that you can go absolutely nuts on. Uh, it's a very similar style from what I can tell. It, like I said, it was just announced. Um, yeah, there's, there's not any screenshots or anything. It's just a teaser image. Yeah, it's just a teaser image of like the logo. But it, it's a pretty it's a pretty beautiful image. If that's actual in-game footage, we don't know. Um, but it's it's made possible through uh, Spaddle... OS, which is a cloud-based technology, so which is able to do more than what the single game image of a server can do. So they're using the the game engine on the server, but they're also using the cloud to get to process more data at one time, so you can do these massive matches. Um, according to the developer, uh, besides a larger map, they're going to have dynamic weather, so like rain, snow, fog, blah, 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 roaming wildlife, so things you're going to walk around, you're going to be like immersed in this world. Uh, they're going to have social hubs, whatever that means, they may have uh, guilds or um, obviously friends and such like that, and they're also going to have a player-driven, in quotes, story. So this is going to be one of the first ones with the story based around the Fortnite kind of does, but I'm not going to count that because it's a, it's a side game, it's not really the whole thing. Um... But I think this is where things are going to start going. They're just going to make these bigger and bigger and bigger and have the social hubs is really what these games are kind of missing. You can't, you can't really have like a guild or a clan or something like that. And I think that's what the next thing is going to be. And if PUBG, which seems to be kind of on top of things, they may be having something like that come down the pipeline once this news was announced. So. Well, yeah, well, from what I'm just looking up here right now, it, it looks like it's more than just a Battle Royale uh, game. It looks like it has a Battle Royale mode, um, and it's going to be, you know, a, a multiplayer, an MMO. It's going to be a, you know, with that's where they get the story-driven quest, or the story-driven story, the player-driven story, sorry, and social hubs. So, I mean, that sounds really interesting to me, if, yeah, if they it, can pull that off. It, it, it's, it, it's not clear what's going to happen, but all we know is it's coming out next year. So, how long yeah. this has been working, who knows? Yeah, right, next year. Uh, yeah, so who knows what's going on? It, it, it is game date, so I'm definitely gonna catch up on it. I tried to find like a, a a way to contact these guys for everyone, but I have not. I have I'm not definitely gonna kind of like be a little uh, pessimistic, I guess, on this and just kind of watch it because stuff like this happens a lot. You know, there was that like awesome uh, Harry Potter MMO that they even started a Kickstarter, and it had this beautiful like game footage and it yeah. looked amazing. And then, like, they found out it was just bullshit, and, like, WB fucking put a stop on it anyway. Like, so, I mean, stuff like this happens every now and then where people, like, announce something, but they have nothing to and show. And fall through. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah that kind of what's worried. They don't have a teaser trailer or, you know, they don't have a teaser trailer or they don't have really any any assets or anything to show besides a, a screenshot. You know what I mean? That, or a I'm, screenshot I'm like sure that. they're not ready to announce. They, I, they yeah. probably weren't even ready to announce this yet. So I think they just threw it out there, took a screenshot of a beautiful sunset with, you know, the light coming through the trees and all that shit to make it look epic. And I'm sure that's just going to hold people over until they can actually give something. Yeah. So I expect that to come out. We're going to hopefully have some more news on that. But 400 player... PvP matches. We'll we'll see. Sounds amazing. We'll see. It yeah. sounds amazing on paper. So we'll see. Sounds like mayhem. Like it sounds awesome. Um, yeah. So moving on to the next bit, uh, we already talked about Fortnite Battle Night uh, Battle Royale. We talked about it a couple times. It comes out twenty six. It's going to be free to play on Xbox One, PS Four, and PC. Anyone can download it for free. So any console you have, you should be able to play it for free. I believe. You can play PlayStation to PC and Xbox One to PC. So um, if anyone wants to play, we're probably going to have a couple nights like that. I think it's going to be pretty sick. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to play it after this. Otherwise, I don't know much about it. 
you're going to skydive in an arena, you find the weapons, and you try to build shit and set traps for people or something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, it's PUBG <laughs> with the Fortnite engine. Like, it It sounds cool. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I got to see how it is. Fortnite was great. We had a lot of fun with it. I really liked the, the tower defense style of game mode, but uh, I, I'm not sure how that's going to translate well into a Battle Royale style game, but we'll see. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wonder if the matches take longer because to build things, you kind of have to gather shit for a while. And I feel like if I'm out there hacking wood, it's really easy for someone to come up and just fucking take me down with a hack. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to try playing it tonight uh, after this. We're going to see how that goes. Uh, but it is going to be free to play all systems within five days. So was it Tuesday? I think 26 was Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, next Tuesday. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll have a game night out of it. That'd be fun. Um, last bit of news before we get into the, the crazy stuff. Uh, Toys R Us files for bankruptcy. Um this isn't a major, I mean, this, there's been, there, I think I've been trying to count, there's been like 12 retail stores this year alone has filed for bankruptcy or going out of business. The only reason why I want to bring this up is because a lot of people my age are are probably going to feel more the nostalgia kind of disappearing because Toys R Us was the shit back in the day. I mean, you'd get, yeah, the, I mean, you'd, you'd get the big catalogs for Christmas and I'd be circling shit, everything. I'd circle like a million things. I wouldn't get a single thing. But like, <laughs> it was fun to go through and see all the cool shit that wouldn't be... Like, I lived in a small town, so I, the ne the nearest Toys R Us was, like, almost an hour away. So, like, they didn't have that at the shitty Kmart I had. Like, there's no toys like that, so it was pretty amazing. Um, one thing I yeah, do I mean, want... It's... The one thing I do want... Sorry. One thing I do want people to look for, like, gamer-wise, is that if this does go through and they can't pull out of this, expect a shit ton of sales on video games and stuff. So people can keep their eye on it. Uh just to burn through the inventory because they're not going to take it back to the company they need to sell it because they already bought the inventory. Expect some pretty slick deals uh, on games, maybe even consoles, uh, maybe 25% off, maybe 75%, depending on how late you want to get in there. It's just something to look, look to to the future. I wish them the best. I wish they pulled through, but I don't know. They've been closing the stores a lot, and I, I think they're like $5 million or $5 billion in debt, so I don't know if they can pull out of it. Who knows? Yeah, well, another thing to remember, like this isn't like – the chapter nine bankruptcy or whatever. Um, for what I was reading earlier, like the, I think it's like chapter eleven bankruptcy, which doesn't mean they have to like liquidate all their assets and like sell everything off. Mm -hmm. What that is, it's like a it's like a restructuring of their financial shit. Yeah, and uh, and it basically makes them like a debt I, safe, is this safe the, haven. Is this the first time they've done that? I don't. I think so. I don't from remember. what I was reading. But what what's cool is they've already procured three. I think it's three billion dollars worth of funding from. Uh, funding sources i guess so banks and shit um so hopefully they're just going to restructure shit hopefully they, i would think it'd be cool if you saw kind of like a toys r us rebranding maybe um maybe yeah. get those stores not looking like shit because the one the one that is an hour away from me looks like garbage i love going through toys r us still uh i mean i have kids obviously but i, I yeah. love doing it as a kid and i still love doing it now but uh, i would love for toys r us to maybe try to like What's the word I'm looking for? Modernize? and Because, I mean, it is so old school yeah, when you go to modernize it. Modernize for sure. And I'd kind of like to see smaller stores um, like uh, uh, like a GameStop. I want to see them do specialized, maybe like mini stores. I think that'd be kind of yeah. slick. Like if they had a Toys R Us GameStop you know, kind of idea. Um, but yeah, like people in the chat say they love Toys R Us. They go to Toys R Us all the time, buy stuff for the kids. It's an experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. It is. It, you walk in there and there's not any TVs, there's no toilet paper, there's no fucking shampoo, like there's nothing in there that bores you as a kid. Like everything in there is amazing. Even if you don't like Barbies, there's it's just amazing how much different shit is in there. It's so it's it's pretty badass. Uh, yeah. So best of luck to them. I hope they pull through. Um, but if they don't, again, you may be able to get some sweet deals in the future. But we'll see. We'll see if they can pull through. Hopefully they do, especially with the holidays coming up. I think they'll they'll probably be pretty aggressive, at least for Black Friday. I'm sure their Black Friday is going to be insane. Insane. Uh, so moving on to a new little section that we kind of yeah. thought of uh, called Itching and Burning. This is uh, Itching and Burning is a small section that we're going to try to find uh, once a week about stupid shit that gamers get pissed off about. Um so if anyone's using stuff that the internet is just up in flames about, yeah, why, stuff that just... why this isn't stuff that really need to be argued about. This is not that extreme, but I brought this up to Matt. We kind of had a laugh about it. So um, this week they had uh, the Mario Odyssey trailer kind of come off, and 
It looked pretty cool. They showed a lot of new things, like some of the graphics were updated. But the one thing that people would not shut the fuck up about was Mario being shirtless and having nipples. It absolutely blew the fucking mind of the internet. Like, Mario has nipples? What the fuck? Like, how is that so hard to believe? And yeah, no, it got it, to I a, think it was just the, the meme level of it. It was just goofy. I, and, I had to but there's some people that were really pissed off. Like, oh, this must be well, why the, the game rating is higher. Like, the ESRB is not E for everyone. It's like T, it's like 10, it's like 10 or something because, oh, Mario's shirtless. And then people went back to even uh, uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga and like Mario was like shirtless and he had like a towel on, like he came out of the shower in like one of the scenes. Like, see, how did Mario grow nipples from this point to then? They're like trying to make this huge, huge discussion. And it even got to a point where someone took the username on Twitter, uh, had, uh, at shirtless Mario, like it's just it got it got way out of control. Like it was really really disgustingly out of control. Uh, but that's not something really gamers should really worry about. They should be worried more about gameplay and you know the shit they're not getting, like getting all your 3DS games like Mario Party and not get them to the Switch. Rather than it, it was Mario good for games. a laugh. I, I think it's funny. I, I think it's funny to point out that. I saw this on Twitter that, you know, Mario has nipples, but yet Link doesn't have nipples. So I didn't understand where that goes. Like, why does Link not have nipples? Yeah, I don't... yeah they're, they're they're going down that rabbit hole, like, really yeah. deep. Like, is Princess Peach in a bikini? Does she have nipples? Can you milk things with nipples, man? Oh, God. I said it at work the other day. Nobody got what I was talking about. Oh, fuck your like, work. You me. So um, that, yeah, that so is that something that's been itching that. and burning uh, this week. Yeah, well, it's a little segment we're going to try out. It's may not be here to stay but we're gonna try to just stuff that is on people's mind and it's not it's all. yeah it's it's something that it's gonna be meme worthy i think this is gonna be the meme worthy section of, of the podcast yeah. god damn it. i i'm so i was so pissed off when i saw that i'm like oh that's kind of cool and it just blew up like gamestop made a big deal about it or GameSpot, and it, i was like oh let's just stop i'm just tired of reading shit about shirtless mario and it just went on like it was the crying jordan of of this week that's what it basically was Oh my god. So terrible. All right, Matt. You ready? Yeah. You get in here? All right, guys. It's time Let's do it. to go elbow deep. <laughs> elbow deep into midnight releases. I'm going to let you start. I'm going to let you start this yeah, one. This, so, is, this is your idea. So uh, sometimes when I'm driving in my car, I talk to myself. And I was having this conversation with myself. Um, just about midnight releases and the state of midnight releases and what midnight releases used to mean and what they mean now. Yeah. Um, because I want to jump off and so I recently went. Uh, I begged my older cousin um to let me borrow his son, which I guess would be my cousin as well. I don't know. <laughs> let, me I, your, let me borrow. Let me borrow your kid. Well, I, I play Destiny with both of them, but uh, you know, his son is ten years old. And Destiny 2 is coming out, and he was obsessed with Destiny 1, and he's, you know, super into Destiny 2. Okay. And I remember being that kid, you know, for Halo and all these other games. So I was like, come on, please let him come to the midnight release. And I begged him, I begged him, and finally got it. We, we called him out of school the next day, you know. We were, made all these plans. I was going to, you know, I was going to have pizza and all this stuff, and I was so pumped. That's So sick. we went to the midnight release, and we pull up to GameStop, and it was just not how I remember midnight releases. Like, you know, this was Destiny 2. This is... This is basically Halo 2. You know, I was at the Halo 2 midnight release. I was at the Halo 3 midnight release. Like, there was, you know, there was, it's not the amount of people. It was just the atmosphere was like, we'd walk in, we'd get our ticket, and then we'd go wait in the car. You know what I mean? Like, and it was so disappointing because... Anticlimactic. Yeah, because okay. I mean, when, when I was, I remember Halo 3 midnight release. The line was around the building. We, we got there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. People, so people brought their TVs. GameStop even brought out TVs to play. We had a Halo tournament. Um, when I worked at GameStop, we did that shit for midnight releases. Um, certain midnight releases, not all of mm-hmm. them. But uh, and then, but the thing is, I, I was talking to the because I know the, I personally know the store manager at, the, at my GameStop, the GameStop I go to, and he was telling me that like none of the stores are doing that shit nowadays because corporate was like, don't do that shit anymore. Like, um, just they don't they just don't have the budget for because even when I was working there, the, the store manager I had at the time, he he's a he's an okay guy, but uh, he he would pay for a lot of that shit out of pocket. Like he would talk to like run a center and he would like work stuff out and like even stuff like that. He would just, he would try to do a lot of that stuff. Um, so GameStop doesn't want to front that anymore. I mean, 
I don't, I've never been to a midnight release at Walmart or something. You know what I mean? That did shit like that. Mm-hmm. But it, I, I, it's just depressing. And I just think, you know, I love digital. I, I'm a huge proponent for digital media. But my thing is like, I think it, it, it's kind of killing the midnight release, which is understandable because it's killing the brick and mortar store. Yeah. But it is depressing. Even when you go to a midnight release now, there's not fanfare behind it. There's not this amazing experience because, you know, mm-hmm. with Halo 3, it was so amazing. I, re- I remember going and, you know, the, the TVs and the tournaments and, there was, you know, you made friends there. You exchanged gamer tags. You, you just talked about, you know, Halo Two and shit. Like we played. One of the dudes set up, um, Guitar Hero, and we all took turns playing Guitar Hero. You know what I mean? Like, I remember the the, the, the dudes at Jimmy John's. Like we, we got a deal. They gave away <laughs> Xbox Live and shit. They gave away Xbox Live cards. They gave away headsets. Like, and why? I, I don't understand why stores, especially especially stores like GameStop, yeah. Best Buy, stuff like that are going away from it. And for one, I mean, what I like is the, the like Destiny released at uh, 10 o'clock my time because mm-hmm. it released um, Pacific time at midnight or whatever. Yeah, 9 Wait, o'clock. Is that, maybe I'm backwards. I don't fucking know. I don't know. <laughs> Destiny went live like at midnight in your region or whatever. Yeah. But like, so the GameStop is, is even for certain games really handing out the games at 9 o'clock. You know, so they don't even close. They just like, okay, you come in, you get your game, here you go. Um, which is neat, but like, I don't know. It, it's just, what are your thoughts on midnight releases? Because I'm, um, I'm just so. I have a lot of experience in midnight releases. I also have a lot of experience of sleeping outside waiting for some. Yeah. Um, so just to paint the picture real quick, so I worked at Best Buy for almost ten years. Um, when I worked at Best Buy, when the Xbox 360 came out, I got off work. I went to my car and changed and got in line. And I was like third in line. And I slept outside through the whole um, through the whole night, freezing fucking cold. I didn't bring enough clothes. Like, I didn't bring enough big enough sleeping bag just to buy an Xbox 360. So, and that was an amazing, an amazing time because people were having fun. It was like a huge party. That's when I kind of, you have a huge vibe. Everyone's stoked. Like, oh, we're going to play Xbox. People are like, people you never talked to before in your life. Like, I still have people on my gamer list that are from that original midnight release because we switched. Like, oh, this is going to be my gamer tag. Like, we got to play. Even though we don't talk anymore. Like, that's how, that's how the, that's how we kind of bonded. Like, I went outside and I brought a barbecue pit and I was barbecuing tri-tip and I was selling sandwiches for like five bucks a piece. And by the time I was done with the whole tri-tip, like two tri-tips and all the bread, I was able to buy two games out of it. Like that's how much money I got from just selling because nobody brought food. Like it wasn't done before. But I feel like, I feel like the minute release is such a, it, it's it's dead. It's not really needed anymore because of the digital releases and the, the way you can just, get it instantly the day it's the instant time it's supposed to come out you already preload it it's already loaded like a day or two ahead of time and you can play the game instantly without even getting out of your house and i think that's what that's what people want a lot of people a lot of gamers are antisocial and they don't want to talk to people so i feel um and i like that that's, too that's where it's coming off but i love i love talking to people like i, I oh, was it destiny i don't remember it was in, i was in fairfield and um, the uh, it, I was in line. I was talking to people, um, and we were kind of sitting there, and and like people, like people that you would normally not talk with, they would come up and just you start talking to them. And people were like, dude, I have uh, I have booze in my car. Some guy came out with like little mini liquor bottles, and we were just drinking outside like in the street. Oh my god! <laughs> like, yeah, it, I got like, a great story about this. Like it was it was it was awesome. Like we were sitting there and like. Uh, in Fairfield, if you guys don't know, there's a, a, a guy, there's a, like a, a rap artist named Sage of Gemini. You may have heard him a couple of times. Like he rolled up with his homies and they like GameStop, like oh shoot, man, like he was VIP. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like Sage, come on, man, you gotta cut in front of us. We're sitting out here for hours. But uh, but I, I I really miss that. I miss like getting off of work, like maybe eating dinner, um, heading over to a minute release where uh, they'd be giving stuff away. Um, you'd be hanging out with people, like say that your friends may come, uh, playing a game, uh, like that was when like PSPs and and the, and the DSs were popular. You can, you're like trading Pokemon and stuff, even a game that you weren't even, a game that that's not even related to the game you're there for. Like it's just huge. And I miss that. 
Um, I did open, I did have a couple minute releases when I was at Best Buy, and I was calling pizza places, I was calling Starbucks, I was calling like Monster, like Red Bull, like, hey, can you pull your Red Bull car up like in the middle of the night and just give out some free Red Bull to these people that are sitting in line? And they're like, sure, and like, it was, it was so, it was so insane that I miss that type of camaraderie, and I feel like it's gone. There's really not a need for it anymore, which is kind of depressing. Like, I, I really and miss do it. Do you think it's the digital releases that killed that? Or do you think it also falls on? Because the way I see it, I fall, I see it digital releases, but I also see it fall the, the uh, brick-and-mortar stores, like the stores that don't take it seriously anymore I, because they don't make an I, event. Like I feel that whenever you have a midnight release, you usually don't make that much money. Like, it, it, the people that show up are just for the game. They get in, they get out. Maybe they buy a strategy guide. Maybe they buy something else. But usually it's the game. They get in, they get out. So, you, on retail stores, they don't make that much money on the games. Like, you maybe make a couple bucks. So, you get a couple yeah. dollars a game. Um, and you got to pay your employees overtime. You got to pay for, like, you got to pay for, you know, giveaways. You want to do that and stuff like that. So, I feel like. The business, in a business sense, it's not worth it for the company. So, like, I gotta no, pay, definitely. I gotta pay a couple thousand dollars to stay open for five hundred bucks. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. But it, you lose that, you you lose that bond with a customer. That's why I feel like yeah. you're you're not the customer was loyal to you because when you had a minute release for a game that they wanted, they were fucking there at the minute release. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't open at midnight, and I want to play that game immediately, I'll just buy it digitally. Like, why would I want to, if I can't wait outside, why would I even spend you money that I can give to someone else the same exact money and be able to play the instant someone kicks that server on? Like, that doesn't make, that, that's that's where it's coming at. I think it's, it's it, it really depends on the game. It's a, If it's a competitive game, Call of Duty, Battlefield, stuff like that, people want it that day. And if you pre-order, you get to play it three days ahead of time. So you can't get that from a physical copy anyway, I don't think. So that's another that's another good point you kind of mentioned there. So like with uh, NBA, um, if you bought the mm -hmm. gold edition or whatever, and I think with like Gears of War did this and Forza did this mm -hmm. and a few other games that did it, if you bought the souped up edition, you were able to get it like three days early. You yeah. you get the digital download or even GameStop was handing out the physical version early. Yeah. Um, because they were allowed to if you had those. So I mean, is that maybe another proponent like in that you can just get the game early if you pay more money and. Do you yeah. think people are fork, forking over, you know, $100 to play the game three days early? I, I think so. I mean, I think it's a, it's a big issue on, like I said, on competitive games. But, like, games that aren't competitive, like Final Fantasy, you know, games that are going to be more story-based. Um, I don't think that it's a reason to have a midnight release. I don't think it's a huge, a huge reason to get something at midnight, I guess you could say. Like, should I get something at midnight? I'll play it for a couple hours. i got to go to sleep and work, and i got to play it later. Like, why don't I just start it tomorrow when I have more time and I'm not exhausted. I mean, it kind of, it kind of depends. But I also feel like the pre-order bonuses really suck lately. Like, there's not a lot of incentive to pre-order, and there's not a huge variety. Like, Best Buy for a while had, like, the best pre-orders, pre-order bonuses for, like, a while. So people would pre-order the shit at Best Buy. But the problem is Best Buy sucked at the pre-order system, and a lot of people didn't get the shit that they were promised. Yeah. So they kind of stopped that. So there's, there's so many different things I think that could that could knock that minute release out. But I I don't know. So I hold think... on. I, I want to jump. I want to jump to something else. There's Go two for things it. I want to. Go for it. So one, I, I just want to um, address myth in the chat. Um, he said the sad thing is Destiny Two that he found out that the GameStop had the game for about a week before launch, but corporate wouldn't allow them to sell it to pre-orders. Um, I don't know if you've worked in retail before, um, myth, but just coming from someone who worked at at, at GameStop for about six years. Um, we've always received big titles, uh, usually the Wednesday or Thursday before the game came out. So we'd have them for like a week. Um, yeah, and we you're, you're not you have to sit on those. Like it's just it's street dated, you know, it's street dated product. But uh, yeah, it's not like GameStop. It's like you know, with Grand Theft Auto, you're not receiving like because I remember Grand Theft Auto, our back room was full of games because that game was pretty like crazy. Yeah. Like, it would be a logistical nightmare to receive fifteen hundred copies of Grand Theft Auto, you know, the day the game came out or the day before the game came out. But uh, yeah, just, just a little information on that, I don't know. But then uh, you also said, you know, you come home and you're tired and you'll just play it tomorrow. Do you think that 
the base of gamer do you think they're growing up now and they understand that like the game can wait or do you think maybe the games the people who make the games are, are making I... games that aren't Okay, so I, I kind of I kind of thought on this like when you when you brought this topic up. I feel like the core gamer that spends their own money have grown up. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I would still love to go to a minute release if there was still a minute release and a reason for me to go. And if I knew someone else was going, I really don't want to stand outside by myself, like, and get a game with maybe two other people outside because minute releases aren't like they used to be. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a lot of parents for the kids, for the younger generation that's going, so say like the 16 to 20-something year olds um, that maybe not have a car, maybe uh, their parents are still buying them games because they don't have an income or, or something to that effect, the parents are not going to go to a minute release. They're not going to go wait in the cold with their kids. Um they're probably just going to say, you know, buy it digitally. Here's my card, or here's, you know, here's a fifty dollar prepaid card or hundred dollar prepaid card. Buy the game, the DLC, and you can just play it at midnight. There's no reason to go out and buy it. I mean, that's that's how I feel. Like I feel like, um, I, I feel like the generation has changed, and everything needs to be more digital. And I think digital is probably yeah. selling a lot more than I than I, than I actually think because I don't like buying digital stuff for some whatever reason. Really. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have I have like so much shit over here on my on my walls. Yeah, um, but it'd be a good topic for another one, just digital versus physical. Yeah, we can do another topic like that. Maybe next week we'll do digital versus yeah, physical. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, so you were kind of saying with that, you know, the digital thing and uh, where I was going to go with this. So just kind of personal experience. So when I left GameStop mm -hmm. and I stopped going to midnight releases because, like you said, you know, they they just weren't they weren't what they used to yeah. be. And I did turn into that, like, I'll just buy the shit digitally and mm -hmm. I'll just pick it up, you know, at midnight. But what really turned me off from the digital, like, the digital shit is the staggered launches or the it doesn't go live until midnight your time. And that shit pissed me off. But I like that, the, you know, the games are going towards, like, midnight at, you know, a lot of times I can play games at 10 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock my time. Yeah. Depending on if they're launching, like, Pacific or, you know, uh, Eastern or whatever. Mm -hmm. That That's always pretty cool. What I would really like to see, though, is like, especially with the digital game, because like, okay, so GameStop receives the game a week early because it's it's, it's a logistical issue. They have to, you know, have yep. that stock in hand. Yeah, it's it's any, it's any retail, yeah, every same. Yeah, so I'm just sorry, I was just GameStop from personal experience. So yeah, probably any retail, Walmart, whatever. What I'm trying to say is like, why doesn't why doesn't digitally like if you want to buy the game digitally, like be like, hey, um, so if you want the game physically, it comes out on the 25th. But hey, uh, if you want it digitally, we're gonna have it uploaded to the server on the twenty second, and it's gonna be good to go. Yeah. So they, I, I, I think it'd be nice if they started offering, you know, like, hey, you want it, you want it, you want it sooner, buy it digital, you'll get it a day sooner, because like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I understand they have to do it day and date because if they do that shit, fucking Walmart will freak out, GameStop will freak out, Best Buy will freak out, and drop their consoles off the shelves, you know. So I get that, but mm -hmm. it would just be nice to see. I, I, I would be excited for that day where like. Game releases are a little more like Steam, where you can just put something up there when it's ready, and you don't necessarily have to have, like, this is the exact day it comes out. Like, you know, if, if a game is ready to go, if the game goes gold and it's certified by Microsoft and Sony or Nintendo or whatever, fucking release the game. I don't get why, like, people wait, like, why they need to sit on the game. But it's a marketing thing, but it's stupid. I yeah, think. it's it's a, it's definitely a marketing thing. But I feel, like, I fully agree with you. Like, I wish minute releases would come back. But I, I do feel like the whole digital aspect of things have really changed the game. Because back when those minute releases were huge, there wasn't really any type of digital. There wasn't even like a store for some of these for mm -hmm. some of these consoles. Like that was the only way to get the game is you had to get the physical copy, and if you wanted to play it right away, you had to be at the store at midnight. So it was that extra push. But because you have a different avenue, I don't have to wait out in the cold, or I don't have to put pants on. I can literally sit in my underwear and play and wait for this game to come out at midnight um it's it's a whole it's a whole how do you say it's it's it, it just the whole dynamic changes um and myth myth just brought something that was the part i don't like about digital is what happens if you don't like the game you, you can't get your money back a lot of digital is actually giving refunds now i think most uh yeah microsoft does now i think um, sony I, does. it may still be in the sony does not I think you just did, I thought. I'll have to double check. Okay. I, I was looking at something. It may, have been, it may have been Microsoft. I don't remember what I was looking at. Um, I know Microsoft did that thing in the preview program where it's kind of like Steam. You have like two hours, and if you don't like it, 
Um, you can return it if it's in with like a week or whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, of it, course, they're starting Steam to get does that, that huge. Yeah, I mean, we'll get we we can actually do that next week if you guys want to sound off on the digital versus physical kind of thing. Yeah, um, I would love to talk about that. That'd be fun. Um, but it's for the topic of midnight releases. I don't. I really don't see them coming back. I really wish they would, but I really don't see. I really don't see any of them come back. I don't know if you can see something like that coming back. I really don't. I really, really don't. Unless there's some sort of terminate involved. I know a lot of people have like Madden terminates when Madden comes out, but I, that's really. Well, that's um, what I was hoping. I would, what I was trying to say is, I mean, I just it would be nice if retailers, you know, wanted to push midnight releases and you know try to make it so. You come and you know for Destiny Two, it'd been cool if they came and they would have had you know. Well, I know Destiny servers went down or whatever for that. Yeah. I don't know if they would have had something going on. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it, it's they, they didn't offer us like, you know they could have they could have ordered a pizza. I mean there was there's eight of us there. I mean order a fucking pizza, dish out you know twenty bucks and order two pizza. You're right next to fucking pop or Pizza Hut. I mean come on. Mm -hmm. But like I don't know, it's just stuff like that. I think would be nice. Um, just I but I understand. I understand from a business point, it makes no money and it doesn't matter, but. When I buy my shit from a big box store, I mean, like you're saying, I could just buy it at home with wearing no pants. Yeah. So why did I put pants on? Why did I come to the store? Like, make me want to come to your store, make an experience. Yeah, um, make me want to buy. Like, that's what I feel like right now. Because like, after my issues with Amazon I had recently, like, make me want to make make me want to give you my money. Like, what are you doing yeah. differently than anyone else? Like, other, but lately no one's done anything differently. So it's like, well, I can go fucking shop anywhere. Like, I don't care if I get like a, a 20% off the pre-order if you guys suck ass and I'm going to get it a week after I paid for it. Like, come on. I, this is so many different, um, so many different avenues. We can dive into all that stuff later. I mean, but yeah, definitely. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's midnight releases. I, that was fun. That was fun to talk about. Yeah, definitely. That was, I, I like that topic. Uh, does anyone else in chat have, uh, any questions Question. or, or, uh, want to, want to get out their minute release or pull their elbow out deep, you know, don't go so far and maybe retract it a little bit. Uh, it's kind of up to you guys. I don't know what you're going to do. Uh, but other than that, I think we're good. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank people for the follows. Uh, then we got a couple bits here and there. I, I much, 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 much appreciate that. Um, if you guys like this, yeah, please hit the follow button. We do this every Thursday Thursdays. night. Um, and starting Saturday mornings, I believe, uh, we get this up on YouTube if you want to listen to it again. And in probably a day or two after that, we get it onto our SoundCloud. Uh, yes. If you want to listen to it without watching our faces and just want to hear our beautiful voices, that's, that's, that is an option. Um, so, yeah, I think we're good to go. Um, I am going to probably hop on to uh, Fortnite if anyone else wants to join me. Again, I don't think we technically can find each other and try to get on the same server. I think it's a bannable offense according to Critter Roney. I think he dropped that bomb on us the other day. Uh, but I'm definitely going to try streaming if you guys want to stick around and watch. Other than that... Yeah, I'm going to jump in and play with you too, so... Cool. Other than that, uh, again, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, super appreciate it. Super appreciate all the, uh, the, the the subscribers and the bits and the followers in the last couple of days. We're pushing towards 80 followers real soon, and that's I think that's pretty damn good for only being around for a month and being Twitch affiliated within you know, two three weeks. So yeah, that's fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah. Also, I mean, I don't want to you know I want to hit up the. It's still September, so September's still going on. Mm -hmm. Um, if you guys got that $2.50, uh, stop buying Big Mac. I think it's until the 6th. It's either until the 2nd or the 6th, I think, is when it ends. the September. So, yeah, half off, two forty nine. dollars uh, It goes to really us. What we're going to do with it, we're going to put it back in the system. We'll probably do a giveaway. I think once we get our first Twitch check, I think we're going to give some shit away. I think it would be yeah, awesome. Definitely. We're going to have a we're gonna have a fucking party. Um, oh, shit. Oh, version drops to 1,000 bits. Damn, Oh, he's, he's keeping it. He wants to keep that bit boss going. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, yeah. Matt, you anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Yeah. <guys>. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Have a good night. I'll, uh, I guess I'm going to start up again real quick once it's done. But peace. Love you.